ten seconds ago, I discovered that I hadn't told Don Chevrolet what a terrific job I thought he did on Saturday, on Sunday on the Grey Cup game. Don, I uh, amend that now, and I thought that you did a fantastic job on the play-by-play. -play. I'm embarrassed. I can't do the sports. Now. <laughs> come on, come on over here, Dick. We'll do it with you. <laughs> don't, don't. We'll save Dick for later. Don't, don't rush things. Now. Okay. The alderman. Well, Vancouver is moving east, and Chicago is heading west as the National Hockey League took on two new members late this afternoon. Vancouver and Buffalo were given conditional franchises for the modest fee of $6 million apiece. The conditions are, in the case of Vancouver, completion of a deal to purchase the Canucks of the Western Leg and a satisfactory lease for the Vancouver Coliseum. The deadline there is December 20th. Buffalo's condition concerns improvements on the arena there to bring it up to at least 15,000 seating capacity for the beginning of next season. Seymour Knox will operate the Buffalo franchise after he sells his 20% interest on the Oakland Seals. Vancouver owners are Metacore, a company based in Minnesota. Chicago Blackhawks will play on the western side of the NHL next year, and the two new teams, Buffalo and Vancouver, will both become members of the Eastern Division. That means that three of the seven Eastern teams will be Canadian cities, Montreal, Toronto, and Vancouver. They'll play a 78-game schedule beginning in the fall. Vancouver has a decided edge over Buffalo when it comes to playing talent. The Vancouver Canucks own a total of 51 players on their own and their affiliate in Rochester. New York Rangers own all but three players currently with the Buffalo team in the American League. Each of the new teams will be allowed to claim 18 players and two goalies at the NHL draft meeting in June. For many of the existing teams, Toronto, for example, perhaps the best example, the loss of as many as four players in the draft could be very costly indeed. The Leafs are so thin right now, they're hard-pressed to offer full value for the price of a seat in Maple Leaf Gardens. Well, David Molson wears two hats. Mr. Molson, of course, the president of the Montreal Canadiens and a member of the Hockey Canada Board of Directors. In Montreal today, Mr. Molson gave the impression that Montreal is going to have to provide the majority of the nine pros who play for the national team in the forthcoming World Hockey Championship. Yes, uh, Stafford Smythe is also a member of Hockey Canada, but they're in a little different position to us, Bob. Uh, they just don't have the hockey players available that we have. You see, the rule stipulates that uh, these nine professionals have to be boys who have not participated in one game. Now, you take an example. On Saturday night, we used a young boy by the name of Sharon, uh, who was filling in for Bobby Russo. He got on the ice for one shift. Uh, a great hockey player and a great potential and a great future. But now he is prevented from being one of the boys who we could send to that national team for the two weeks in March. And this is a ridiculous rule. Where did that rule come from? Nobody heard of it until recently. Is it a Bunny Ahern uh, stratagem? Well, I would have to uh, say that he probably had something to do with it. And uh, I wasn't over at the meetings in Switzerland last July when, when this resolution was put forward and accepted. And no one seems to have any record in writing, at least, of what was actually accepted. And this is the problem. The Canadian national team currently touring Europe is finding the competition unusually stiff on that trip. After a 4-0 loss to Czechoslovakia last night on the opening game of the Moscow Invitational Tournament, the Canadians were hard-pressed to squeeze out a 5-4 win today over lightly regarded East Germany. Canada ran up a 3-0 lead, and then they almost blew the game as the East Germans outscored them 4-2 over the final two periods. New York Ranger backup goalie Terry Sachuk was sidelined today when he suffered a badly bruised left leg during a practice in New York. He'll miss tomorrow's game against Chicago. George Eaton of Toronto has become the first Canadian to join a factory team on the Grand Prix racing circuit. Eaton has been confirmed as the third member of the BRM team next year, joining Jackie Oliver of England and Pedro Rodriguez of Mexico. He'll drive one of the new Formula A cars BRM is building for the 1970 Can-Am series. And his first Grand Prix start will be early in the year in South Africa. Nick Williams, fired as the manager of the Boston Red Sox in September, is coming back to Canada as third base coach with the Montreal Expos. Williams managed Toronto in the International League before joining Boston. Montreal was involved in the first player trade of the Major League meetings in Fort Lauderdale, Florida today. Larry Jaster, a relief pitcher, won only one game while losing six for Montreal, <coughs> excuse me, was traded away to the Atlanta Braves. In return, Montreal receives Atlanta right-hander Jim Britton. He won seven games and lost five this past season. Expos also get minor league outfielder and catcher Don Johnson. We'll be checking with Alderman Beddoes from Etobicoke right after these messages. Weekday, back in a moment with a sports viewpoint.
worn out winter tires won't work. Goodyear Wide Tread Polyglass Winter Tire with a polyester cord body and fiberglass cord belt. Polyglass, built to last up to twice as long as our best-selling winter tire. The Suburbanite Wide Tread Polyglass Tire. Only Goodyear has it.